I feel like a woman. I'm gonna cut my dick off and take hormones, right? Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, what would be the repercussions if everyone followed their heart? Would there be any consequences if everyone did what they desire? Great question. And I've heard it said by Stephen Pressfield, this first just popped into my mind uh, in his book, Do the Work, that if everyone followed their heart, if everybody did what they were supposed to do, what they came here to do, the world would be a great place. The world would be amazing if we all fit our role, if we all did what we're really here to do. And I think that's true. I think that's important. But the way you word the question throws me off into a different direction. So although I do think it's true that if we all fulfilled our purpose, our true purpose, that the world would revolve in a much more, a smoother way, right? A nicer way. But you say, what if everyone followed their heart? And we got we to gotta explore that issue of the heart. I was watching a video recently talking about the sacred heart of Jesus. And uh, if you ever notice in, in many of the depictions, I, used to, I have one right there, many of the depictions of the sacred heart of Jesus, there was, there's a crown of thorns around his heart, right? You know he wears a crown of thorns. That was a part of the torture device that they used uh, when they crucified him. But there was, there's also a thorn around, there's a crown of thorns around his heart. And the author of this video is saying, that back in those days, right, back in, you know, biblical times, right, maybe even not that far, uh, in that long ago, the, when someone spoke of the heart, they were talking in terms of a person's whole being. When you say you put your heart into it, it means you put your whole being, you put your body, you put your mind, you put your soul, you put everything into what it is that you're doing. And so the sacred heart of Jesus uh, is, is a suffering heart because his whole being suffered. And this is what he was trying to explain. And what I kind of want to ride on right now in terms of putting your whole being into something. Uh, when we say, follow your heart today, mostly what we're thinking about is our emotions, doing what we feel like. Now, in contrast to Jesus, that we have various satanic characters, Satan worshipers, uh, guys like Alex, Alistair Crowley. Um, here's another one. I can't remember his name. I can see his picture in my head. Uh, but specifically Alistair Crowley, uh, he would say his, his main call, I even think he has a book called this. His main call to action is, is do what thou wilt. Do what thou wilt. Do what you feel like doing is essentially the is is the motto, is the is the mindset. Do whatever you feel like doing. And if we live in a world where everybody keep just does what they feel like doing, we'd be living in a very disordered, screwed up world. Because the heart is the seat of many, many, many traumas and deceit. I I mentioned this in previous videos, but I'll do it again here. That in uh, modern. Um, like uh, psych psychology, but like biological psychology, like, like you know, the way the, the physical brain and the nerves work, there's something called the polyvagal theory. It's associated with the vagus nerve, right? And you could look up into the work of Stephen Porges to understand this, as well as um, interpersonal neurobiology. That's the term, neurobiology. Um, that, that brings us to attachment theory. So those, these are still theories, the polyvagal theory and the attachment theory as it relates to the heart, right? And, and, uh, and why the heart shouldn't be trusted, why we shouldn't follow our heart. He, or, or the theory goes, when the mother, who is your first, your first encounter in life is with the mother. When the mother is looking at the child's face, just, just gazing at the child or interacting with the child, the countenance of the mother's face, the predominant emotion on the mother's face is imprinted on that child's heart. The way that happens, and what I mean by that is her emotions are transferred to him. And the way that happens is, and of course I'm not the expert, expert in this, you can look up the work of Daniel Siegel, he speaks about this as well, 
that the, there are mirror neurons in the brain, and I think he calls it the prefrontal cortex, uh, that when, particularly during this, this very pliable, malleable stage, the baby takes on the, uh, the emotional content of the mother through, through these mirror neurons and almost like mimics the mother's face, so the emotion that's, that's present within the mother's countenance, the baby takes it on in, in a sort of way. But not only, not only does the baby like kind of mimic or like, you know, f because babies look at the face. That's how babies know what's going on with somebody. Just like a dog does, it's very primal. You look at the face to understand what's going on. The baby now, that, that mirroring is transferred into the emotional body through this polyvagal nerve. And so there's literally a, an imprint on the feeling body, the emotional body of the child, which mirrors that of the mother. And so then you grow up, right? And so, and this is, the, according to this theory, this would be for everyone. So then you grow up and in a world where uh, mommy rules, we live in a matriarchy and there's no, uh, there's no clean break from the world of the mother, the young man then grows up as a, as a, as a child, but then, well into his adulthood, carrying the emotional content of his mother, of his mother. And so these are emotions that were transferred to him by his mother that do not actually belong to him. Jesse Lee Peterson would say, you have the mind of your mother. You have the mind of your mother. So you then are an adult and you're, you know, doing what you feel, right? You're, you're following your heart because now we're not talking in terms of the whole being. We're talking in, in in uh, relationship to just the emotional being, right? Because that's what, that's what the heart has become. And so we have these disordered emotions that no longer belong to us and we're making decisions that really aren't ours. Last week, somebody asked about guilt and shame and a lot of the guilt and shame comes from this, uh, you know, almost like this imprint of mommy's face when you do something naughty or you think something naughty or you're doing something against her will even though you're 35 years old sense of guilt, a sense of shame comes up. So this, all this just to say that the heart is, uh, when we're speaking in terms of the emotional body, is, is not a trustworthy source for us to make all of our decisions. We have to include the entire being. And when we're talking, entire, talking in terms of the entire being, we got to think in these four parts, right? This, this number four shows up in so many different ways. It's amazing. Of course, we're here talking about being kings, right? You got the king, warrior, magician, lover. You got thinking, feeling, being, doing. And the entire, the entire uh, being, right? The entire being is associated with spirit, mind, emotion, and then the physical reality of what is. And so a lot of times people who are following their heart, they're missing logic, right? I feel something that I feel like I should do this, right? It gives me good feelings, right? And once again, remember, feelings are typically disordered. Feelings are manipulated by movies. Feelings are manipulated by, uh, by pop culture, by music. Feelings are, manip are, are like water. They're just, it's constantly flowing. It's just constantly moving. We can't be attached to it. But when we make a decision out of that watery base, out of that, out of that movement that, that ungrounded place without the mind, without logic, without saying, you know, does this actually make sense? Does this actually uh, relate to my state in life, right? Because now we're starting talking about the body, right? So we, like I said, we got heart, we got emotions, we got mind, we got body. Another thing people will do is that they will ignore their physical reality. For example, someone who, you know, who's maybe uh, five foot six, and wants to play in the NBA and uh, doesn't, even to, doesn't know how to dribble a basketball right now, right? Not to say that, you know, that there aren't outliers and there are people that can do it, but generally speaking, if you look at it, this just doesn't match up with your reality. Now, it may feel good to think about and to daydream and fantasize, but it doesn't actually match up with your reality, your, your, state, in play, your, your state in life. Here's another one. And this is why divorce is so rampant. Here's another one. And, uh, you know, I was, I'm thinking about it in terms of man, of a man. I heard this story, but this mostly women do this. Uh, you will, well, let me talk about men in, in particular first. There's this concept in Catholicism that your voc your primary vocation as a man, when you have a family is fatherhood. 
that is so I am a father first then I'm a strength coach I'm a mentor I'm a publisher I'm a youtuber all these various things come next so when somebody asks you as a man who you are you're if you are married right or have a family your primary vocation is your family and then you'll have these people these men who you know they'll have a family but their heart is telling them that they need to leave their family and, and the, in this particular story this young man left his wife and child and uh he was called to the jungle he was called to the woods and he wanted and he went and he lived up in a tree he left his family and lived up in a tree and he was convinced that you know it's not his fault that his family is struggling that the world should take care of his wife and child this is a part of the effeminate thinking that uh that has bred this, this movement towards socialism in our world where men don't take responsibility and we believe that the state and that the village, the people should take care of our responsibilities, but that's not true. Your state, your vocation in life is to, is to stay with that wife and to stay with those children um, regardless of what you feel. Because when you look at the physical reality of things, it is a disordered, it's disordered to think otherwise. You know, uh, this is, in relation to a man, but we do know now that uh, upwards to 90% of divorces in certain states are initiated by women. Once again, rather than looking at their state in life, I am a mother, I am a wife, uh, they have this feeling, right? There, there's a popular a book that popularized this idea for women. I think it's called like, you know, water, water and chocolate or something like that. It was very popular a couple of years ago. And it's about this woman who fell out of love with her husband and then she you know went and traveled the world doing her right and a lot of women would it was like one of oprah's bestseller books right like women we should just follow our hearts if you're in a relationship that's not making you happy and a lot of these divorces women will cry uh abuse but it's not it's not 90 times out of 10 they just fell out of they don't have any respect for their husbands and that's why i work with men because it's about making men strong again so that women will respect us um but a lot of times it's they fell out of love they and what that means basically is that they don't respect their husbands anymore and rather than uh <laughs> rather than suffering rather than sticking through rather than mortifying the emotions mortifying the flesh and doing what's right the world tells you like Alistair Crowley, do what thou wilt. Do what thou wilt when it comes to following the emotions is the, is like I said, the calling card of Satan because the feelings are disordered. The feelings are, the emotions are uh, traumatized. Nobody in this world is not traumatized. Every single one of us are traumatized. Everybody's traumatized by emotion. If you live your life based on your, tra your traumatized essence, you're going to be screwed. You need logic, you need the brain, you need the physical reality. And of course I said there's four, right? There's four, there's above the brain. There's a living your life and moving with grace. That's the spiritual realm and that's where we're aiming as kings. Becoming kings in our lives, is, it goes beyond even what we think is right or what we feel is right, right? It goes beyond our, our physical limitations and it's about the graces that God is, is providing for us in our life, the revelations for our state in life from God. And so the, you say, what would the consequences be if everyone did what they desired? If everyone did what they desired out of the, the, the misconception that the heart equals the emotions and that we should be following our emotions, we'd be living in a screwed up, uh, we'd be living in the world that we're living in right now. Basically, that's where we're living right now. I feel like a woman. I'm going to cut my dick off and take hormones, right? Uh, I feel, you know, people feel all kinds of disordered and weird and wacky ways that, that are fringe, right? That, that, dare I say, are not good, <laughs> right? Because, we, you know, we live in a relativistic world, right? Where everything's subjective. It's all about me, what I believe, what I want, what I feel. If we live in a world where, and we do live in a world where everybody does that, there's chaos, and that's why we're seeing a lot of chaos that we have right now because nobody has an objective standard. There's no objective standard. I think it's important. I think it's important for us to have objective standards, objective rights and wrongs, good and bad, right? 
But once again, we live in a lukewarm, gray, wishy-washy world where that sounds oppressive, <laughs> right? People don't like to be confined that way. And that's why there's no discipline. That's why there's no commitment. And that's why most people waffle through life and maybe, hit, maybe they have a crisis at some point and realize I've wasted most of my life doing things that really don't make any sense. And I've been wasting, I've been wasting my time. So uh, bottom line coming full circle uh, is with the repercussions of people following their heart and doing what they desire is not a good place. It's not a good world. A good world is where we have objective values uh, we have, we strive for virtue and we live through our whole being. Grace, logic, emotion is a part of that because there's, the, there's an emotional guidance system. Emotions can, can wake you up to certain things, but they need to be discerned. And then of course, like I've said many, many times in this program, we have to look at where we are. Look at what's in front of you. The best way to know what to do is to tackle what's right in front of you. So that's it, my man. I hope that helps you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where, among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.